Welcome to the award-winning Appalachian Moments podcast, produced by Jermaine Media. My name is Mickey Pruitt, and I appreciate you stopping by to check us out. In every episode of Appalachian Moments, we journey back in time and talking about old Appalachia. Today's show is sponsored by Life Story Insurance, and your host is Mr. Scott Ballard. Enjoy. Thanks, Mickey. And hello to everyone listening all up and down the Blue Ridge. And to those folks who've moved far, far away, welcome home. In today's podcast, we tackle the daunting task of building a railroad from Abingdon, Virginia to Todd, North Carolina, as we take a ride on the Creeper. For nearly 20 years, beginning in the 1880s, the prospect for a railroad coming into the mountains of Virginia and North Carolina looked bleak. Two companies ended up in bankruptcy before a third finally got the idea rolling. And roll it did into Damascus, Virginia in February 1900. Men hauled the surveying tools of the day, including a compass, a chain, a transit, and a level while scampering through the woods, over the hills, and across creeks. All that hammering of stakes into the ground was certainly quite a sight for all the locals. Astounding was the creativity and vision of those first surveyors who plotted the course for the railroad as it snaked its way to White Top in 1912 and then to Todd a few years later. The full trip from Abington to Todd was only 76 miles. But owing to its difficult terrain, 108 bridges had to be constructed to complete the journey. According to news reports at the time, on May 12, 1915, the Creeper pulled into the Elkland Depot amid spooked horses, barking dogs, folks waving from their homes, and children running alongside in the pouring rain. In the beginning, the train ran every day but Sunday. In the spirit of any new railroad route, towns sprang up along the tracks. White Top, Virginia had a hotel, a doctor, a dentist, and 500 residents. And at the peak of its boom time, Todd boasted two doctors, a dentist, one bank, seven stores, three mills, two hotels, and the first car dealership in the county. And ominous sign of things to come. It was always an event when the train arrived, as it was the main link to the outside world, or what folks called the yawn end. We might think we can order almost anything online today, but back then, the Sears and Roebuck catalog was the Amazon.com of the day. And when the train arrived, railroad men unloaded ringer washers, Victrola record players, sewing machines, farm implements, and even Ford automobiles to be assembled on site. All those consumer goods were exciting, but the main objective of the railroad was to transport vast stands of virgin timber. Huge stacks of red spruce from Mount Rogers, along with massive oak and chestnut from North Carolina, filled flatbed cars. The tremendous weight of these enormous logs gave rise to the train's nickname, the Virginia Creeper. A 3% uphill grade might not sound like much, but during the return trip back up to White Top, people could literally walk alongside the train and keep pace. With especially heavy loads, the train might be double-headed, meaning it used two engines to make the push. The Creeper didn't stay around in Todd for long. By 1933, it pulled out of that station for the last time, just 18 years after it first arrived. Lumber shipments had decreased from 485 cars in 1927 to just 20 cars only five years later. Moving freight on the rails was also losing out to trucks and passenger service to cars as roads kept improving. A brief resurgence in rail traffic happened in the 1930s as stone was hauled in for the construction of the Blue Ridge Parkway and carloads of cattle arrived, having been shipped to North Carolina out of the Dust Bowl conditions out west. As always, please share this podcast and your own Virginia Creeper memories on our Facebook page. 
That wraps up another episode of Appalachian Moments, produced by Jermaine Media. Today's show was sponsored by Life Story Insurance, with offices in Ashe, Allegheny, Caldwell, Surrey, Watauga, and Wilkes Counties. Check them out online at lifestoryinsurance.com. Until next time, y'all have a good one.